Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Red Dragon. Today we're operating on a map that I actually had to look up the name for. This is Back to Inchon. And Back to Inchon is a map that is, um, well, it's very large, but generally you don't have too many areas of engagement. Usually the main areas where you actually see uh, the trouble start is around here at Hotel. Sometimes over Delta Charlie and Echo is generally not touched because it is so open and so hard to make a play through it that you don't really see too much action. Of course you do have the large lake and with that comes the risk or the opportunity of helicopter assaults but I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing those. Today I'm, follow I'm following uh, Fokutsi and I'm going to be reading a bit of his description. He says, I was starting from the edge of the map, so that's right over here. The plan was, one, to blind the enemy killing recon, if it was airborne, and two, to rush in quickly and destroy enemy forces before they could entrench. Then, to capture the enemy spawn zone. Uh, that's ambitious, that means going all the way over to Gulf. Capture the enemy spawn zone and attack from three sides. So that would be along this axis, along that axis, and potentially through Alpha, but I'm not really sure about that. I was confronting quite experienced players beforehand and later with the support of his nonetheless experienced teammate. I could not hold the position without the help of my teammate. And now here comes the important part. I was interrupted twice during the game. I had to answer the door. Each time cost me a super heavy. Yeah, there is one thing in Wargame um, that can cost you the game more so than um, a lack of experience or misplays. And that's the mailman, uh, UPS, DHL, whichever delivery order or delivery service happens to be knocking on your door. Happened to me too. Sometimes it just happens while I'm recording the replays. Anyway, let's hope that today that doesn't happen to me because happening it to or it happening to Fukutsi already is a, going to be a problem. Now Fukutsi is going in with a Moderna, an M84 A and reconnaissance tank. By the way, he's playing uh, Entente General. Deck code in the description down below. Backed up by Tatra Reconnaissance, or at least Tatra with Recon inside. A Strop and a Newa. These guys cannot be detected by radar, fortunately. Also makes them quite hard to deal with if you're playing Blue 4. A couple of OT Tab 71s, and I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are going to rush down this little slope, traverse the river, and deploy their infantry on the other side. Now using infantry over here is quite easy because of course they can use easily access or they can actually move up this ridge. Vehicles a little bit less so because with vehicles you have to try and get up the slopes and that creates predictable patterns of engagement which also means they're easier to counter. Now we are fighting a destruction match today which means you don't really have to be focusing too much on capturing sectors and um, you don't really need to control them. With the exception, of course, of income. Income in a destruction game can be very important. And I mean income in the sense of how many units can I buy. Now at the moment we have... Uh, who is this? Rapture, I think? Rapture holding off the... Or holding the Constantine sector. Rapture is also going to be capturing Lenid. And um, Fakutsi himself is covering his own forces with a fighter. And I think this is what he meant when he said that he's going to be blinding the enemy for uh, or with reconnaissance. This could very well... There we go. There's the reconnaissance chopper. If he shoots that down, that might allow him to get over here. But it's not easy. Because this area is easily accessed by blue. And supply lines for blue are shorter than they are for red. However, they were able to get at least a couple of kills here. One was an infantry transport with infantry inside. You saw 10 plus 35. So that might allow him just enough breathing room to get his Tatras in. In the meanwhile, the Proletary 90 with the OT Tab 71s are on the other side of the, the um, water over here, making their way up. But for the moment, let's focus on this engagement. It's a Spartan against Royal Marines. Now the Chieftains are being misplayed over here. Chieftains off-road are dreadl dreadfully slow at 45. So these guys are really not going to be getting too close anytime soon. What is getting close is a Hellfire. 
And where is his super heavy? There's the super heavy. The Moderna's falling back. He's waiting for the Strop to potentially take care of that Lynx. Lynx is probably not going to stick around. It's trying to get a missile in on the Strop. And it misses. Because the Lynx gets stunned. There goes your Lynx 3. The Specialni are in a position where they might be able to push out these guys from the town. But the guys in the town, the SBS, are being covered by three tanks and some other form of infantry. Or actually, that was a transport, I think. Moderna against three chieftains is not going to go well for the chieftains. This thing has 23 AP and 21 frontal armor. This thing has 14 frontal armor. So this does an incredible amount of damage to it and it has a 19 AP gun. Which means that it had no chance against a Moderna. He's also in contact with the Royal Marines on the right flank. And the Proletarian 90, not yet backed up by the transport, are doing a lot of damage to them. But the Royal Marines are about to start fighting back. Fortunately, the M84AN can help them out. So this might just tip the skills in the favor of the Proletarian 90. Proletarian 90 are only shock troops though, but not much to the avail of the Commander Marines, the fact that they're Spec Ops and Elite. They go down. Leaving him in control of the forest. Well, control might be a big word because he only has a couple of infantry units over here. There goes the SBS. This is very, very risky. He's bringing out his Moderna, trying to push his advantage. He's already wiped out one of the chieftains and the other chieftain has taken a good beating. Unfortunately now, the Moderna gets a fuel leak. And you can see its fuel rapidly going down. Its accuracy still is quite good, at least good enough to wipe out one more Chieftain. The Chieftain probably does not really have a good shot at the Moderna anymore, but it does... Well... Does it? It can easily take out an OT-62. No, OT's behind the cover here. Chieftain pushes forward, gets hit by the Moderna, and the Chieftain takes out the AA. Oh crap. Now he has to rely on his Newa, which is far too far behind to be effective against Helos. How much further can he push? He has currently scored 660 points. That's a hell of a lot this early on in the game. Because the game really only started five minutes ago. Or actually four and a half if you're looking at the clock. What do we have over here? T60... T62? Wow. Okay. I, for one, don't like the T-62. Yes, it's very cheap. You can actually get it for less than an infantry squad. But their accuracy is bad. Their stabilizer is very, very bad. Their range is bad. Their HE is alright, but the rate of fire is only 6 versus most tanks, which are usually sitting around 8 to even 12 rounds a minute rate of fire. Frontal armor is only 8. I really don't know why you'd want to be using T-62s over here, other than potentially shoot stuff in the town. Uh, T-55 recon, I don't think it's going to be enough to spot the infantry that might be sitting in here. At the very least, you know that there's no ATGMs in here. Or that the ATGMs just don't care enough about these guys to even fire off a missile. I need more troops, says Fukutsi. Uh, the place- what? Haubin says I need more troops? Oh, he's probably being asked to get across here into Cheriton. And so far, Cheriton is sort of secure. The Moderna and the M84 AN are still standing by, but again, they have very little AA. Now, that is being handled. A Strop 2 is coming in. But it's going to take them quite a while to actually get to the front line. So in the meanwhile, the Proletari are still trying to make a move on Gregory. But of course, Gregory is going to get increasingly hard to capture. Because at this point, Blue is very much aware of the threat. And is probably doing whatever it can to counter enemy infantry incursions over here. Or at least, I would be. I'd be sending infantry to defend this tree line. Uh, put fire support vehicles over here. And with that, make it as hard as possible for Red 4 to get into my precious capture zone. Now, he might be able to neutralize it, but then the question is how fast can you bring in a command vehicle? Um, currently, Haubin is sending in ACV for Chariton. That's going to give them more income. 
Not so much directly more points, of course, it's destruction, not conquest, but the additional income could allow them to buy a couple more units, which might tip the scales over here and actually allow them to get into Gregory. Far left, we got a couple of Magar 7s. Um, yeah, this is where we see the dreadful T-62. Okay, fair enough, he got one shot off and he killed it. See, this area is quite hard to defend. Usually, you just see AGGMs flying back and forth over here. Pushing into one of those sectors is hard. MiG-912A comes in. Thermobaric bombs at the ready. He narrowly avoids two missiles. I wonder if that actually is going to kill the AA. It might. It might. The MD4 is trying to push its luck. The Rangers are here at the ready, waiting for the M84 to show itself again. But now they're being suppressed by both the M84 and the Moderna. They don't stand a chance. Proletary. Hold on. They neutralized the command vehicle. Interesting. That CV needs to get its ass over here and quick. A Vickers Mark 11 is being rushed forward, engaging an OT Tap 71, but in the process giving its own position away. It's no match for an M84 or T72 Moderna, but you do need to find it. And they have recaptured the sector. So now the question is, where the hell is that command vehicle? And more importantly, is Howe been paying enough attention, and he is not, to bring a CV even closer? If they can smoke up this sector, just this little tree line over here, you can bring in a CV and just neutralize it, and then the Proletary might be able to find the enemy command vehicle, shut it down, and allow Red 4 to bring in their own units. But Blue's not going to sit idly by while this happens. Humvees are coming in. They fortunately have not yet spotted the Proletary. That might be the Spartan. This is quite risky, but... It might yield rewards. Oh, it was Delta Force. He offloaded Delta just in time. But Delta will need to be further suppressed by the Moderna if they want to stand any chance of killing it. What do we have coming in here? That's a Stormer, I think. Yeah, it's a Stormer. Delta's going down. There's the reconnaissance vehicle. You can see just how good this Moderna is at engaging two threats at the same time. One with the autocannon, one with the main gun. That is an, an aspect of this tank that I still really like. That 2A42 just does so much better than the normal machine gun that you see on most tanks. Unfortunately, the Proletari are having a, quite a bad day in the tree line. And at this point, he might be AFK here. Otherwise, he wouldn't let his Moderna sit out here. So I think this is the first time when he has to answer the door. There we go. That might have been it. As he said, every time I had to answer the door, twice during this game, I lost a Super Heavy. So now he has a Skeleton Force over here. He has a Strop, an M8480N, and an 8 Proletary. And that is it. The M84 is nothing that uh, these guys should be underestimating because it can spot for itself, it has a good gun, a good rate of fire and enough armor to at least sustain itself for quite a while. Haubin is paying attention, brought in his command unit and is not yet... there we go, now it's offloaded. Sector is neutralized. Now we just need to find the enemy command and we need to have enough forces to do it. He still has the Pada Branchi over here might have forgotten it, I'm not sure. Look at that. I like the Vickers, but the Strop really doesn't like the Vickers. And the M84 eventually wipes it out. LV25 comes in. Oh shit. CV's forced to run. Killed off. LV25 comes in. The Strop's taking fire from uh, what I think is a mass of four mortars. Dear. He's down to two hit points, but he survived. See, now is when you would really want to ideally fly in both a command vehicle and more infantry. The helicopters could provide fire support for the infantry, 
land them quickly and make sure that they have enough time to secure this sector. The same goes for a CV. You have an infantry CV and a helicopter, you have a good chance of actually bringing it in fast. Unfortunately, the Royal Marines and that whole plan. And wipe out the MD4. So now he has nothing left in that sector but a very panicked and deadly or, well, potentially mortally wounded Strop 2. Put a branch here now moving forward. But at this point, they don't really have any sort of fire support. They're out there on their own. They are getting some support, potentially, from the BTR-80A over here on the far right. Or, well, far left of the sector. We also have... what the hell is this? Transport? Saxon. This is going to be the Battle of the Machine Guns again. Oh, dear. The Strop murdered one of the Eric squads and is on its way to kill the second one. There we go. He's running a little low on ammo. They kill off the Royal Marines that were left. More Humvees are coming in. This is the problem. The resupply line is too damn fast. Red cannot bring in enough infantry in short enough of a time span to get his forces in here. Those BTR-80s, though, are making life very hard on Delta Force. And with it, the Yukyokte, as well as the Padabranchi, stand a much better chance of actually holding on to the sector. OT-71 apparently won the fight from the Stormer, but not without actually taking a pretty bad beating. Where did that bomb... Oh, there the... That's where the bombs went. The Gyokde are now taking fire, not just from the uh, surviving Royal Marines here, but also from the mortars in the back. I know it's easy to say after the fact, but the mortars would have been a more tempting target than the uh, infantry that was still out there. He's bringing in more infantry, and notice how he's bypassing the front of the sector. He's coming in from the side, trying to cut off enemy reinforcements. He scores a kill on a helo, but has to pay for it by losing his own aircraft. So that was not really that good of a trade. OT tabs are immediately going to go for a uh, look for the enemy command vehicle. And this is when more and more American forces start to arrive in this sector. Bradleys. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I think, yeah, Rangers, Infantry. This is still that Strop that was initially over here. So any helicopter that comes here immediately gets shot down. And if they do send in seed after it, then they don't really have a lot of luck because these things are not radar guided. Now where's the CV? This CV should not be here, it should be here. Much, much closer. OT tab gets wiped out. Where the hell is the CV? Come on, buddy, find it. Oh, shit. There goes the, uh, the legendary straw. Hold on, they found it? I don't think they killed it yet. So that means it's on the move. ZTZ-85-3 can now also assist the infantry. And with a 4-HE gun, it can very quickly make short work of infantry, if it can get enough sight on them. If enemy infantry push on this thing, then that 19 frontal armor is not really going to protect it. Especially not against the Royal Marines. Another Moderna comes in, TY-90s, to deal with enemy helicopters as well. So far, uh, not really any threat of helos over here. The question is, can they, and I mean blue, get a CV back in here quickly enough to suppress it? And I think the answer is no, because they already sent a CV seemingly from Fedor to uh, Gregory to try and hold on. And so far, they don't have control of the sector. But now they do. And you can bet your ass that they immediately spawn in a ton more units. Just trying to keep Red out of their lead sector. Or their spawn zone. Butterbranchi taking a hell of a beating here. The other Butterbranchi are trying to fight for their lives, but immediately getting mortared. The Butterbranchi squad that was coming to assist them is also getting hammered. This is not going to go well. Maybe the... Oh, shit. That was a bit of a red-on-red red incident over here. The OT tab gets wiped out by the Marines, and the, inf the infantry that was in here immediately gets cremated by the napalm. 
I understand what he was trying to do, but it's not really gonna work out for him. Shit. There's the surviving infantry. As so far as you can call that surviving. Again, the ZTZ pushes forward. We're trying to deal damage against anything it can find. More OT tabs are being spawned in. There's the CV. The red CV, I mean. Shit. Royal Marines, the, the guys that were over here, wiped out his second Moderna. And I think that at this point, he went AFK for the second time in this match. Because that's when he knew there were Royal Marines there. They just walked their asses down over here and shot the Moderna in the side. So this is probably the second time when he went AFK. Still, the battle is not lost. But they did lose a little bit more than they probably were hoping for. More Royal Marines, this time against a couple of healthy Yoktes and another Vihor. The Vihor, though, does not carry an autocannon, and with it cannot do as well against infantry, especially not this close. But he's bypassing the US Marines, not really waiting for a fight with them because he's looking for the command vehicle. The Marines, however, deny that opportunity. Wipe him out. Napalm comes in. No, evac's ordered. He drops. No, he gets evac before he drops. So he says Napalm is incoming, but he actually decides against it. At this point, though, Red has captured the fob, allowing him to resupply, or them, to resupply their infantry from up close. That is, if there is any infantry to resupply. Because they're going through these infantry units fairly quickly. So time for the Legion 90 to fight back and just cleanse the whole area of infantry. And with those FGV-84s, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. The WZ-551s can also be used against the Bradleys. Three frontal armor uh, with two AP on the gun. These guys have two frontal or two AP and two frontal armor. So they're going to need to get a little closer than they might like. Oh shit, enemy shelling's coming in. They need to get a little closer than they might like, but with it, they will take out the Bradleys. And unfortunately, it looks like the CV died. So once again, the Blue's in command, and Blue is trying to once again resupply the sector. More OT tabs arrive right at the same time as the Marines. The question is who drops off the units first, and it turns out to be Fukutsi. Fukutsi then has a much easier time killing off the surviving US Marines, which there are really not too many left of. One left. Now he might, once again, try to make a play for that enemy command vehicle. Uh, there is, at the moment, no CV en route. So, Red's gonna have a very hard time holding on to this. At least they have AA, they have the FOB, they have infantry. They even have a pram. Now, if you're not familiar with the pram, I wouldn't blame you. But this thing can do quite a bit of damage against infantry. 5 HE gun. It's just not that accurate, and it cannot fire on the move. Also comes with a conquers, and with it, you can do a lot of nasty stuff to enemy transports. But again, they're not that accurate. Although, against a Humvee, you don't really need an HEGM like that. Delta Force versus Weekend Padabranchi is definitely going to be won by the Delta Force. You can constantly see these sort of one-on-ones or 1v2s happening the whole time. T90S pushes forward from Haubin on the left side of uh, Greg. What do we have here? That would be a resupply unit. A dead resupply. Well, no, actually, that could be an M35. So there might be infantry in there, but the way that it detonated, that's a logistics unit. The Pram is trying to deal damage to the Bradley, but unfortunately the Bradley with the autocannon can do much more damage with the autocannon, but the Pram with the Conquerors takes it out. It shouldn't have done that any, lat any seconds later, because it went down to one hit point. Those mortars are still a hell of a problem. Is there another CV en route? Yes, there is. Haubin almost has a CV in range. Now, in case you're saying this is a one-sided fight, um, it is not. Because blue is at 3,000, let's say almost 3,100. Red at 3,500. 
So the damage or the difference in points is actually not that great. Fortunately, it seems that for once, blue has to be relocating their CV. Red almost has a CV in. If he stops it right when it gets in, so now would be a good time, then red can spawn units in here. And if they do so, they're going to come right into the very soft underbelly of blue four. If there's anything left, that is. He spawns in a Vihor, a T90S, the one that was flanking around here, seems to be going unchallenged and is looking for a couple of kills on the Saxons over here. Vihor spawns in, the Strop, so now is AA and into tank warfare. And now it seems that Blue is suddenly not doing so well anymore, having lost this sector. And with Red spawning in a whole bunch of units over here, it's going to be much more difficult for Blue to recapture it. And sure enough, they wipe out his strop, but the infantry does not last long. Now, you have Greg. Blue 4 only has Center, Anna, and Boris, so they are definitely deprived of income. Red has everything else. Leonid, Constantine, Dimitri, Elena, Jot, Cheriton, Ivan, and now Gregory. So they can bring in a lot of forces. But can they bring them in fast enough? And the next question is, where do you go? For them, the next stop seems to be Fedor. And with it, they need more infantry, because Fedor, again, is a very heavy infantry, uh, or a heavy infantry fighting area. This is usually where you see fights like that go down. So you're going to need more infantry, but he probably also lost a good number of infantry units. And, well, you can't really blame him, because he fought like hell to get Gregory, but he lost a lot of infantry in the process. I wonder how this thing's going to go down. If they're only 300 points apart. It might look like Blue is losing heavily, but they're paying for every inch of terrain that they capture. Kurnus fires a missile and wipes out the Kub. So far, it's not hit. SU-27 looking for a fight. Does not get it. And suddenly, Blue is only 100 points behind. Rushing into Canadian Airborne and losing another transport with infantry is not helping either. The Canadian Airborne, of course, won't really be around to tell the tale of that too much longer. But then again, they keep running into these little pockets of resistance. Apparently both Haubin and uh, Fukutsi at this point had the same idea. We're going to bring in aerial reconnaissance. And with it, we might be able to get a little bit more information on what's happening in Boris. Good plan. I just hope that they can land them. They get an enemy... Or they get a... Yeah. The Senka could have killed off that vehicle. But it's a reconnaissance unit and it fights back. So he loses it. They're now only... 60, no, make that 70 points apart. So this can still very much go either way. A couple minutes ago I would have said it's a done deal for red, but not so much. They kill that unit as a sort of uh, retaliatory strike. Is that enough? 25 points, yeah, he killed it. Is that enough? M84 pushes north, TY-90s as well, but TY-90s are AA helos. They need some sort of units to spot for them, because their own optics is poor. Now it looks like Red is also making a move on this town. Uh, this time around, not with the T-62s, but with the T-72Bs, which are a far, far better tank. Eight, eight uh, rounds a minute rate of fire, much better accuracy, much better frontal armor. This is so much better of a tank in every respect. But then again, you're paying 90 points for it, as opposed to the 20 points that you're paying for a T-62. They seem to be smoking up and bringing in another group of infantry. They're definitely trying to pressure them out of center, and in the meanwhile, wrapping up pockets of resistance over here. And they're encountering some rangers, some HGM units, so far nothing they can't handle. But still, they're not really getting the points that they need. 4,000... 3,990. So again, only 70 points apart. So they need high-value kills. And I don't think that Blue is too eager to give it to them. This Pay 10, though, could be a very nice kill. And it is guarding the 
approach here of Rapture. Unfortunately, this trailer with 2625 meter range is currently being outranged by the P10. But the P10 suddenly makes it easier. It gets close, closer, and gets killed off by this trailer. Unfortunately, that does not help the Modus Trailki a whole lot. As they were forced to walk after all their transports got killed off. And now they're fighting both Chai Tet 13 and Rangers. F 111C. Oh shit, where did that drop? Right on top of the T90S. Fortunately, this tank can handle that. Just not repeatedly. You don't want to have two of those charges being dropped on top of your T90S. Chai Tet 13 somehow. Evacuating the building might have had something to do with the airstrike that came in. We're at 43.95 versus 41.75. It's currently 100, well, 180 points. Please tell me that book is inactive. The Strela, however, is not. They probably killed that La Vie. Really? No, the La Vie made it out alive. They did get a 110 point kill there. Again, they do not have a lot of reconnaissance, with the exception of the M84AN. And again, don't underestimate this thing. It has very good optics and medium stealth on a tank. Normally you can see a tank coming from a couple of miles away, but not this thing. Despite not actually uh, having any sort of camo netting like they do on the Dutch tanks, interestingly. I thought that could have made a nice detail. Anyway... 4395, 4405, 44, for red. They're only 40 points ahead. And the closer they get to Boris, I think the more intense the fighting is going to get. Currently a little over 100 points ahead. Where's your AA? There's the Strop. See, anything that comes up this ridge or here gets hammered by the Vihor. Well, no, not really. The Vihor is parked at such an angle that it cannot really engage anything. What you got there? That would be a combat helicopter. An Apache, Paten, probably, yep. Paten wipes out an OT-62. That's not too much of a problem. As long as it does not detect the Vihor, we're fine. Time for the TY-90s to make their presence known. Now he spots the Vihor. The Vihor immediately takes a Hellfire. Tries to fire back with a machine gun. Paten, not really impressed. Vihor takes three Hellfires and is still alive. The Paten, however, is not. TY-90s proceed to wipe out the Paten and the F-111C. But the Vickers might still, yep, take out the wounded Vihor. He fired just before he died. The M84 took him out, but he took out the Vihor. He spawns in another one, but it's going to take a little bit of time for that thing to actually get there. He still has another one parked back here. So he could be moving that one up as well. And with it, get a little bit more firepower. And now you can see that the damage difference is increasing. They're now almost 300 points ahead. And they're just trying to clear up as much infantry and as much resistance between them and Boris as possible. Because if they can neutralize this sector, the game's over. F-111C comes in. What's he angling to hit? He drops on what I think they assume is a position of infantry. They completely fuck it up. There's no infantry down there at all. F-111C goes down. That's, I think, the last F-111C that he had available. Because they just killed another one shortly uh, before that. And now they are 400 points ahead. Now we're getting somewhere. 20 minutes left. Uh, they still don't have control of the town over here. They are making a move, however. Again. It's a half-assed attack from Rapture. It's not really using any sort of smoke cover. And the Paten... No, sorry, the... Um, God, what's it called? This heavy anti-tank unit is trying to make a play for it. Does not really get the shot off enough in time. I think that this area might be mostly empty. Look at how easy it is for them to fly in a 912. He did not get shot at. No, actually he does get shot at. But he doesn't get hit the whole way in. 
600 points ahead. I wonder how this fight's gonna go. 43 Gavati are waiting for the Monstrilki in the building. These guys are gonna need a lot more fire support if they wanna dislodge the Gavati from the building. And again, this sector's not really what it's about. This is what it's about. And they already have, again, Proletary 90 in this area. Just look at how many points Fukatsu has already gotten. 2960. To be fair, he couldn't have done that without the support of Haubin. And uh, he brought in a fair number of CVs over here and supporting units. Took out a couple of high-value targets as well, allowing Fukutsi to actually make his move onto this sector. They now captured the FOB, so there's not that much left. He napalmed the CV, and now we have eyes on the actual CV. That's enough for Blackbird to surrender, because their main spawn is now dead. Leaves him with two CVs, but one coming out of center is not likely to make it. And the one coming in from Anna is likely to be greeted by the gunfire from M84As. So again, not that likely to actually make a push. Lynx surrenders, and that just leaves uh, Kazachek, who, judging by the time left on this game, is not really going to be holding on for too much longer. So let's speed things along and have a look at the result screen. There we go. All right, um, Fukutsi ended up with 33-15 in kills, 19-19 in losses, so good kill-death ratio there. Especially considering he was constantly pushing, constantly moving up, and constantly doing damage. Well done there. Unfortunately, he was interrupted twice, as he wrote in the description of the replay. Um, I had to answer the door. Shit like that happens, but it can and generally will cost you units, progress, terrain. You're going to have to sacrifice any or more of those. Now look at how that Moderna just butchered a whole bunch. This was the Moderna that operated on the uh, open area early on. Took out the Royal Marines before they were able to entrench. Took out all the Chieftains, Rangers, Vickers, Delta. He definitely got his money worth out of that Moderna. m 4 an also doing a good number of damage. A good number, really. <laughs> doing a good amount of damage. Strop 2... Saving the life of the Moderna by taking out the Lynx 3. This thing could have ended his push with the death of the Moderna. Fortunately, the Strop there was able to save it. The other Strop doing quite a bit of damage. And I think this is our legendary Strop that at very close range took out both the Eryx groups. Fortunately, not doing too much damage. And the rest of the forces nicely spread out the damage. One of the OT Tab 71s of all things took out an Iltis. The other command vehicle was killed by a MiG-29. A MiG uh, where's the other CV kill? There was the other one, M84A. And the last kill that was registered was an M91A Vhor killing off the US Marines 90. Anyway, good push. Not an easy terrain to push through. And he definitely got a lot of resistance from uh, Blackbird and Lynx over on the far right. So really, really well played to all sides on that map. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please become or consider becoming a patron for the channel. And um, I can use any support you can offer, of course. Have a gameplay or a replay like this that you should think I should that you think I should really see. Link down below in the description. And if you want to join my Discord, link in the description as well. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more.